we're actually one minute early. Um, so we can uh, we can wait another another minute or two for make sure everyone gets here. Sorry, you just recorded. Grant. Get me dancing. Dance. <laughs> Dance. Justin, I'm going to probably say we can kick off now. Sounds good. Let's get started. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this session on uh, DHS2 as a platform. Um, it's titled DHS2 is the platform. I'll get into what that means in just a minute. Um, but we're going to go over a number of the, uh, the tools that are provided by DHS2, as well as kind of the guiding principles uh, that we try to embody and are trying to, to build more and more uh, capacity around in, in order to make DHIS2 the foundation for extensibility and extensions uh, to be adaptable to local contexts as well as different use cases uh, because it is used in many different contexts around the world. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I'm going to kick you off, Grant. There we go. Okay, should be able to see my screen now. Yes. So we're gonna talk a little bit. Uh, first, I will introduce uh, designing for extensibility. Uh, this will be just a very quick overview of what it means to design for extensibility uh, in the DHS2 core team. Uh, and um, some of this is, is relatively new, but it's a, it's a concept that we've been trying to embed into our development practices for the last several years. Um, and it actually was one of the kind of founding principles of DHS2 as well. Um, I will then turn it over to my colleague Deborah, who will talk about uh, the community developer community initiatives that we have launched uh, in order to support and connect with the community of developers around the world who are building on top of DHS2 using our tools as well as uh, ex extending and integrating with other systems. Uh, in different contexts. Um, then I will introduce some of the updates and the roadmap for our application platform, which is targeted at web apps uh, building on top of DHS2. Uh, and Kai, will, uh, who is my colleague on the, on the front end team, will also uh, introduce some specific uh, exciting new updates that we have there um, around offline applications for DHS2. Then I'll turn it over to my colleague, Victor, who will talk about the Android SDK and what has happened and what's coming soon there. Uh, and then I will come back to myself just to show a little bit of what's coming down the line in DHIS2. We'll learn more about that in the what's next se session, uh, plenary session on Friday for the last day of this conference. Um, and then we'll open it up for questions. So if at any time during this presentation you have questions, feel free to put them into the, the chat or in the community or practice post. Uh, we'll try to address them live, or uh, if we don't get to them or don't have time, we will respond to them uh, on the community or practice after the session. So I'm, I'm gonna start by talking just to quickly about mining ability and what this means. Generally, uh, platform is an overloaded term, meaning that we use it for too many things, especially in DHIS2 world. Uh, we have a platform team, we have a platform product, uh, which is encompassing a number of different web applications uh, and the, the server backend and a number of other things. Um, we have an application platform upon which other web applications can be built. Um, and these are all, accurate terms, but they're a little bit confusing because they all refer to slightly different things. Uh, and they're all part of the bigger picture, which is that DHS2 itself is the platform. DHS2 is the platform, meaning that 
it is the foundation upon which you can build whatever you want. Uh, and you, it provides some of the foundational structure that can be used to build uh, a system for addressing maternal health uh, in routine surveillance, or it can be used to uh, administer COVID vaccinations across an entire country uh, and deal with uh, things like certification of that, those vaccination events. It can do a lot of different things. Um, it can also be used in education, in logistics, in a number of other um, realms that are not directly related to health. Uh, and those are all enabled because DHIS2 itself is designed as a platform. Uh, and some of the key goals for embedding this uh, concept of DHS2 as a platform into the work that we do to build DHS2 as the UIO uh, core team um, is that we design for extensibility and we try to design for extensibility first, meaning that we build features certainly that are used uh, and useful for the health use cases that are most prevalent for use of DHS2, but we also build in a way that can be adapted and uh, extended to many other use cases, many other contexts that we cannot um, address from the kind of global platform level because they are specific to certain contexts or certain use cases. Um, and one of the goals that we're, we're not quite there yet, but that we're trying to work towards is that everything that UIO as the core team can do should also be possible in third-party modules. Right now, it's a little bit more difficult to build a full featured analytics application on top of DHIS2 without building your own custom backends and things like this. Um, it can also be difficult to uh, build integrations with other systems if you don't have the, the infrastructure available in DHIS2 itself. And so that's a goal that we're working towards. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but first, I'm going to, talk, to turn it over to my colleagues to present some uh, updates about the different uh, pieces of what we do currently do for um, uh, for towards making DHS2 extensible. Um, and I will uh, first turn it over to Deborah, who will talk about our developer community initiatives. Deborah, go ahead and take it away and feel free to introduce yourself. I'll introduce myself in a minute uh, at the start. I sorry. Okay, yes, I, I can, uh, I'll share my screen. Okay, I think you should be able to see my screen now. Yeah? Yes, we can. Okay, great, great, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Austin, for uh, the introduction. Um, so hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Deborah Galeano. And uh, I joined DHIS2 uh, in January this year uh, as a developer advocate. And um, yeah, okay, so in other words, my job is to basically um, foster or build on, on the existing uh, DHIS2 developer community and to promote uh, developer outreach initiatives. Uh, so today I'll be talking about uh, this uh, initiatives and activities that we have been uh, working on uh, over the, the past months. Um, so these are the things that I'll cover today um, very quickly, which are all part of creating a better experience for new and existing uh, DHS2 developers uh, in terms of uh, one, um, having uh, resources or documentations available for developers, um, also um, uh, having or offering uh, learning material or online workshops, and third, um, having a community or, or connecting with the entire DHIS2 um, developer community. Uh, so I'll go over uh, some of these uh, topics uh, now. Um, yeah, so as for developer resources, um, we wanted to create a more centralized documentation system uh, where developers can find all the information that they need in one place. Uh, so in March, we relaunched the developer portal 
um, which is in, uh, sorry, it's an improved uh, version of the uh, one that we had before. And um, this new website offers uh, several improvements on documentation mainly, uh, and it offers also a better uh, interface and other uh, interesting uh, developer uh, focused information. Um, so that's the goal to, to have um, a developer portal that provides better documentation and uh, that offers more developer resources in general, um, like how to guides, tutorials and information about uh, events, uh, community uh, related activities. Um, so this is a uh, work in progress. I will show you <laughs> in a little bit, uh, but we're planning on adding more content or more documentation there uh, for sure. And uh, I just wanted to give you um, like a quick uh, tour. Uh, so I'll just, uh, oh, I have it here. Okay, so if you go to developers.dhis2.org, you will get to uh, our website, the developer portal. Uh, if you go to the docu documentation page, uh, you will see that it is, um, this page is well organized. Uh, and the sidebar here is divided into different uh, types of documentation, like tutorials. Uh, we will add more, but this is for um, developers who are new to DHS2 uh, web app development and who wants to uh, get started using uh, the app platform, using uh, the UI library and communicating with the, the, the web API using the app runtime. Uh, you can check uh, these tutorials. We'll, we'll again continue adding uh, more um, uh, documentation here and also the... Um, ah, yeah, okay, so if you go to the guides uh, section, you would have a step-by-step -step guides on a specific uh, topics. So this is how to set up your local uh, environment. Uh, I'm not going to go through every um, topic, but you can check uh, this on your own, uh, the app hub as well that we um, mentioned uh, yesterday. If you um, were there in our session about the, the, the new uh, app hub uh, websites, uh, if not, make sure to check the, 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 the video uh, that was shared on the community of practice. We will add more guides on the reference and the conceptual guides. Uh, and this will uh, be uh, uh, like, um, yeah, a, a more specific um, documentation on, on the API and uh, like an overview of uh, concepts about the, yeah, the DHIS2. Uh, so in the blogs, uh, what's new um, is that we added a way, this is one of our most popular uh, blog posts, and you can easily comment on this uh, post here by using, uh, you can, you only need a GitHub account. Uh, you just log in and you can uh, comment there. We will uh, add more blogs. Uh, this is where we post, um, uh, things about announcements or what's new on our libraries and tools and things like that. Um, so yeah, just stay tuned for, for the next uh, blogs. Uh, the events uh, page, our tab uh, is divided by uh, the type of events that are relevant to the developer community. Uh, we had hosted the last one, uh, the last webinar in February. You can check information here. I will. Uh, cover this in a little bit uh, more, the academy uh, that we uh, uh, hosted uh, in March and in May, but I'll talk about uh, about it in a little bit. And the annual conference right now, and I'll just uh, update this information um, uh, in a bit, um, sorry. And then this is a very important page because um, this is where you can uh, find more information about the community, the HIS2 developer community. And um, I'm sure you're familiar with the community of practice. Uh, we have also added uh, or created, I guess, um, a Slack workspace for the community, the developer community. Uh, and I will talk about it a little bit uh, later too. Um, but yeah, make sure that you check this. And but I will I will um, uh, talk about this uh, in my next uh, slides. 
Um, yeah, so about the Web and Android Academy uh, workshops one and two. Uh, yeah, this year we hosted two online workshops as part of uh, uh, the DHS2 Academy. Level one was held in, in March, level two in May. And now the, the goal of this academy is to uh, make sure that uh, the, the DHS2 developers become familiar with uh, our tools and technologies um, that are available to the community uh, out of the box, uh, whether it's mobile or a web application. Uh, so the purpose uh, of this uh, is of course to, to share the most uh, up-to-date and modern uh, tooling that the DHIS2 core team is also using uh, and share this knowledge with the entire the, uh, DHIS2 developer community um, and to make the most out of this uh, tools and, <laughs> and make the life of uh, developers a bit easier when they're developing their uh, applications. Um, so the new thing this time uh, was that uh, we had two parallel sessions. Uh, so the, the web track and the Android track. Uh, so for the web app uh, in this workshop, the participants uh, first learned how to um, get started building a DHIS2 web app uh, from scratch uh, using the app platform. Uh, also uh, learn how to use the UI library, uh, the DHIS2 UI library, how to communicate uh, with the DHIS2 uh, web API uh, using the app runtime. Uh, we had a session on testing, um, how to make uh, applications more secure, performant and, and much more. And on the Android track, uh, the participants uh, learn how to use the Android SDK uh, to build uh, custom uh, mobile applications and uh, how to sync uh, metadata and data, uh, how to use validation rules and program indicators to perform data quality and uh, analytic tasks and uh, much more. So if you didn't have the chance to participate uh, in the Academy this year, don't worry, um, because all the sessions uh, were fully recorded and they are all available in the developer portal. And I'm again going to quickly show you this. Uh, I did uh, show you this, this page, but I'm going to show you how to uh, find, uh, if you want to follow along, uh, starting from workshop one you have the android track the web track and you have the links to the video so these are links to the to the videos um, and also some slides and then you have more advanced uh, topics here also divided in tracks uh, the one that we had in may uh, if you want to follow along the ex some of the exercises we have the web app uh, repository here and you can uh, follow along so it's it's a great way to to get started um, uh, or yeah to get started using uh, um, the, the DHS2 to, uh, tools and uh, yes so if you have any questions just feel free to, to contact me um, and I think um, yeah, so the my next uh, topic is about uh, the developer community meetups. And uh, yeah, what are these meetups? Uh, so the online meetup is a, is a series of um, online and informal meetings uh, with the DHIS2 developer community. And the idea is to get together and discuss any topic uh, that's of interest to the community. And it's also a great way to get to know each other um, virtually, of course, uh, but um, it's also a place where developers feel free to ask questions uh, and, and chat uh, with uh, the DHS2 core team and uh, other uh, fellow developers. Um, we normally host these meetings twice a month and we choose um, uh, the topic of discussions based on the feedback uh, that we receive from the community through uh, uh, surveys that um, I share. And uh, so far we have uh, hosted five meetups since March uh, this year. And these are the topics that uh, we covered during those meetings. So first it was about the, the newly renovated DHS2 UI library documentation 
that uses uh, Storybook uh, to show showcase these components. It was presented by Kai uh, from the uh, our platform. He's uh, he's going to make a presentation a bit later, so you will get to meet him. And the next one was, um, yeah, what makes a good generic DHS2 application? How to use the data store? That was presented by uh, Austin, sorry. And the last two meetings uh, were about, uh, yeah, it was a demo of the App Hub, and that was uh, done by Birk uh, Johansson uh, from the platform team as well. And the last one was um, about how to use Cypress and Cucumber and our DHS2 utilities and commands to test uh, applications. That was done by Jan Garga uh, from the app platform as well, uh, DHIS2. Uh, so this is um, a very interesting um, developer outreach initiative as uh, we've seen an increasing number of participants since we started in March. Uh, so we hope that uh, the interest will continue to grow. And you're all invited, of course, to come to our meetup next month in July. Um, uh, which will be announced uh, uh, in the community of practice, uh, like the picture here shows uh, on, the, on the right. And um, on the DHS to developer uh, Slack workspace that I'll talk about it uh, in a little bit. So yeah, keep an eye on, on those uh, posts uh, in the coming days. Yeah, so the Slack workspace. Uh, I have been uh, mentioning this uh, so many times, uh, and, and now finally I get to that. Uh, so why why do we have uh, Slack, and what's the purpose? Uh, so in addition to the uh, community of practice that we already have, um, this workspace is um, a good place to quickly uh, share content uh, that's again of interest to the uh, developer community. It's just the developer community. Uh, so we share announcements um, that were also posted in the community of practice, uh, events, some resources, and uh, other updates, uh, like the meetups, for example. Um, it's also uh, uh, used for, for getting feedback. So uh, to share um, surveys and to get anonymous feedback from, from the developer community to see what you uh, would like to see what you want to um, discuss or any features that you want to the, uh, the, the, the core team to, to uh, work on maybe in, 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 in future uh, uh, versions, et cetera. So this is, uh, this is a great way. And it's also easy to communicate uh, with everyone <laughs> because developers are used to using Slack so it's just easy to, to write a direct message uh, and uh, yeah, to get in touch. So we're very proud that we have um, a good number of 221 as of today. It's still growing. And uh, of course, this includes the DHS2 core team, but um, uh, external developers are increasing uh, every day. So I'm, I'm proud to say that this is the number uh, as of today and how to join, uh, I will be sharing the link, the invitation link on the chat uh, or in the chat in Zoom. And if you are watching this recording, uh, you can go to this link and uh, on the developer portal, you can find the, the, the title here, Slack workspace, and you can um, fill out this form. And then I get, um, an alert and then I send uh, an invitation very quickly. So just uh, make sure that you do that. Uh, if not, I will share the, the link in the chat um, and you can join the, the Slack workspace as well. Uh, so what's next? Uh, so this is um, yeah my last slide. And before I wrap up, I just wanted to share uh, what uh, we will be working on. Uh, and as for the developer portal, uh, as I mentioned, we will be adding more guides, more tutorials, uh, more uh, documentation, and uh, also uh, add more functionalities like a search bar uh, and uh, translation functionalities. Um, 
and uh, we're planning on um, adding more Android documentation as well. Uh, so that's that's coming up. Um, the contributions are welcome. Um, this is uh, something that I will be uh, sharing in Slack or in the community of practice. It will be very easy to contribute to the developer portal if you want to. Um, if you find something that is not clear or you want to add a, a guide uh, that you think it's will be useful for, to the community, you have feel free. The, the only thing you need is a GitHub account. You create uh, a pull request on our repository and uh, we will review those and then add it to the developer portal. So feel free to do that. Uh, I will share uh, a guide on how to contribute uh, as well in the, um, in, the, in, in the Slack workspace in the community of practice. Um, and then as for meetups, yes, we will, uh, we're planning on having more Android topics. So far we only have been uh, talking about uh, web applications. So we were looking forward to, to uh, having more Android uh, things. And also uh, we're working on having uh, self-paced courses in addition to um, live and, uh, yeah, the live and, and uh, virtual workshops that, we, that, that I spoke about earlier. So this, this will be a great way of uh, introducing new uh, DHS2 developers um, to our community. Uh, so we are working on that. Um, and then other initiatives, again, we highly encourage you to share your opinion and feedback uh, during, I don't know, these meetings or on Slack about anything that you think could benefit the, the developer community. If there's anything that uh, you would like us uh, to, to cover, uh, feel free to let us know. Uh, and then uh, with that, I think I, I hopefully I covered everything I wanted to say. And I think I'm, I'm not sure who's next, but uh, I will stop sharing my screen and feel free to contact me on Slack or the community of practice or uh, by email. You can see my email there. And uh, yes, I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks a lot, Deborah. Um, really great to see all the all the um, yeah, the growth of the community of developers and especially the the material that we have to support that that community um, and we we would love more feedback on that as well so please um, please share your feedback join the community um, we'd love ideas for how we can better um, share resources what resources are missing um, and all of that as well so please reach out to to Deborah um, if you and join the slack group um, uh, to, to to learn more about that uh, and to share your share your ideas I'm going to now move on to talking about the application platform um, and I did see that there was a question in the chat that will hopefully be addressed by this um, uh, this next presentation slightly but I'll, I'll address it directly in the in the question session section at the end as well um here is there we go let me make sure that you can see this okay um so kai and myself will present some updates on the web application platform and where it's going from here um i'm not going to spend too much time on the platform itself there have been some some great updates that have come out in the last year uh, since the last annual conference I, I talked about a few of them in the opening what's new section on uh on monday which was very quick um but i will go over them quickly again uh and then i'll turn it over to kai who has the uh the more interesting presentation i think you all you all enjoy what he has to say um first off just a very quick review what is the application platform um, generally, it is trying to extract as much as possible of the common elements of DHS2 web applications uh, so that those applications can be easier to develop, easier to maintain, more consistent to, uh, to use for DHS2 users, easier to update, easier to um, interact with other applications on, the, on that platform. Um, in technical terms, we have what's called an app shell that provides a lot of common services to an application. 
Um, and then we have the, the core kind of functionality of that application itself, which is getting smaller and smaller as the App Hub gets more and more robust. Um, and we use that application platform not only for our own core applications, but also for applications that the developer community uh, creates and shares with um, either uses uh, for specific implementations or shares through the App Hub to, other, uh, to be used around in other implementations around the world. Uh, there are three major components of the app platform. The first is what we call app scripts, uh, which is developer kind of build time tools for developing, building, and publishing an application. Um, we have a runtime that is uh, used to talk to the DJS2 server, show alerts in a consistent way, um, and, and interact with other components of the uh, DHS2 ecosystem in the, uh, in the browser, in the, in the application itself. Uh, and we also have an extensive UI library in React that is implementing the DHS2 design system and has a comprehensive set of uh, building blocks that you can use to build up your application uh, and build it in a way that is familiar and accessible to users of DHS2 so that you don't have different uh, interfaces for every single app that is on the DHS2 platform. And we'll talk a little bit more about some of the new things that are um, uh, have been developed in all three of these in a moment. Um, I also wanted to, to quickly mention the new DHS2 App Hub. It's been completely redesigned, and we also have redesigned a, uh, the app management application, which will be released shortly. Um, the App Hub now supports organizations. It now supports continuous delivery from a continuous integration pipeline so that applications can be more quickly deployed and published to that App Hub and used by implementations of DHS2 in the wild. Uh, it has GitHub auth authentication. It also has um, a lot more and better, more accessible details about the, the apps that have been updated, uploaded there, where their source code lives, what versions are available, who the developer is, what this application does, all of those types of things. This gets into addressing a little bit the question that was asked in the chat, um, but we also have a, a review board that reviews submissions to the App Hub on a weekly basis uh, and we have uh, published a set of guidelines that we analyze those applications against. Those applications are, or that, those guidelines are available at developers.dhs2.org. They're also linked, I believe, uh, from the submission page on the App Hub itself. Uh, and the key requirements uh, or guidelines that we uh, use to analyze applications that are submitted to the App Hub is that the apps should be useful and generic, uh, useful and appropriate, apologies. They should be generic and open source, and they should be well-designed and documented, and they should be secure and performant. Uh, I'm not gonna get into too much of this specifically. I talked a bit more about it in the session yesterday about the, about the new App Hub and the app management app um, and continuous application delivery, which we're also utilizing in the core team to more quickly uh, release fixes and features for applications on the DHS2 platform. Um, you can watch that video if you want to learn more. There have also been many uh, improvements to the platform itself. Um, I'm highlighting here a number of uh, new components to the UI library that have been released. Uh, one that isn't mentioned here that was just released very recently is the data table. Um, and we have some new ones coming very soon, like uh, an updated sharing dialog, updates to the org unit tree, uh, and a few other uh, exciting new UI components as well. Um, we have also introduced standardized application alerts so that uh, the alerting mechanism used in every application should be consistent. Um, and this is a, a pretty big one that we're, that we're uh, rolling out, but we've introduced server version detection, which allows a single version of an application to support multiple versions of DHIS2 and to turn on and off different parts of the application based on the functionality or the features that are available in the core DHS2 server version that it's talking to. Uh, so this is a really powerful tool to uh, reduce the maintenance cost of maintaining server or application versions over time um, because you can uh, support multiple versions with just a single application rather than needing a separate version of the application for each DHS2 uh, ver server version. Um, 
these are a more comprehensive list of some of those features that have been introduced to the application platform. Uh, I mentioned yesterday uh, that we also have uh, deploy and publish um, commands available in the command line interface for the D uh, application platform app scripts. This allows you to just with a single, uh, a single command uh, publish your application directly to the App Hub, which now supports API keys for continuous integration. I mentioned several of the UI components that we've introduced recently. Uh, we also have a number of runtime improvements that um, make it easier and more, more consistent to interact directly with the API. There's a number of things coming soon. This is a non-exhaustive list, but we will soon be introducing native plugin builds in, alongside applications so that applications can expose a plugin as well as a uh, full-blown web application. Um, initially, that will target analytics plugins for the dashboard, but we're also working on uh, allowing those plugins to uh, serve as um, tracker capture or capture widgets um, to be able to support custom ways to do uh, data entry um, for particular use cases. Uh, and that should be using a common technology to, to push that forward. Um, we've, we're improving our support for feature toggling, which I mentioned earlier, progressive web apps, which Kai will introduce in just a moment. Um, we also are working on data caching and offline data. Kai will talk a little bit about offline data, but we'll also have data caching within memory within a particular session for an application, which should significantly improve performance and uh, have some uh, benefits for the usability of an application as well. Um, more or UI updates are coming soon. And a big one is token authentication as well, which uh, will remove the need for uh, cookie-based authentication for applications, and it'll also hopefully allow for uh, more fine-grained control of what certain applications can do. Um, if, if you're familiar with OAuth um, or uh, using something like uh, connecting to Facebook, oftentimes you give certain permissions to Facebook or to GitHub when you authenticate a separate application against that, that core uh, authentication system. Um, and so in this case, you could say, I want to install this application and I want this application only to be able to read these certain uh, types of, uh, of objects uh, or write to this um, configuration, um, maybe, the, maybe to be able to write system settings, for instance. Uh, and that will allow, even if an administrator user can log into an application, um, it will allow that application to have fine-grained permission controls uh, based on what that uh, application is designed to do. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to Kai to do a very uh, cool presentation on progressive web apps and what that means for DHS2 web applications. Um, Kai, do you want to share your screen or do you want me to continue here? And you can just tell me when to move. I'll share. Okay. Yeah, thank you for the introduction. And I'll try to be pretty quick, be conscious of the time. Let's see, I think I'll share my whole screen. All right, here we are. Let me see if I can hide this. Great. So yeah, my name is Kai. I, I'm a, a front-end developer on the platform team. I've been working on some features to enable uh, progressive web app features in the application platform. And so a progressive web app is an app that is a, a web app that is installable, like uh, kind of like a native app uh, you might, uh, it's kind of like installing an app on a phone, for example, um, on a phone browser, you, you might have seen the option like save this app to my home screen. Um, that's a progressive web app feature. And uh, the main thing that we're supporting is offline capability. So you'll be able to visit the app and look at data while you're offline, which can be a big thing for, uh, for users who often need to go out into the field where there's no network connection. So these features are enabled by a web manifest, which is just a file that has some metadata about the app that uh, is used for its installation information and a service worker, which is, um, uh, uh, it's like a program that runs alongside the app that has uh, access to the network traffic that goes to and from it. And it has the ability to cache data and serve that um, 
from offline. So like it stores data in the user's browser storage. So um, in the platform, we're adding support for those features. All apps will get a, a web manifest for the install installability. Um, and you can opt in to using a service worker to provide offline caching. You'll opt in using the d2config.js file in, uh, in your d2 app. Um, there will also be cacheable sections, which I'll describe more, but they'll be used for um, caching particular sections of an app without caching all of them at once. And there will also be a tool for ac accessing the online status of the app, which will be useful for providing different features if you're online or offline when you're making an app. So just to uh, describe the details of how the apps are cached for offline use, when you opt into the PWA features, um, the service worker will install when you run the app and it will download all of the, the static assets that are included in the built app. And those will be served directly from the service worker, which will provide a significant performance benefit on loading the app up. And uh, uh, that'll be things like scripts to run the app and uh, style sheets um, and other data that's used to run the app, like uh, say, for example, system information or a user's dashboards list will uh, be fetched over the network. And whenever that happens, it will be added to the offline cache. Um, so you'll get the most up-to-date information possible. But then if you go offline, it will still be there in the cache and you'll still be able to access those things. So I wanna talk about the dashboard app because that will be the first core app that uses these PWA features and has a kind of unique requirement that informs the, the cacheable section features that we're adding with, uh, with a suite of PWA features in the platform. Um, and so I'll just go to the dashboards app now to show that uh, currently uh, an offline capable dashboards app is under construction. And um, what that will look like is that you'll be able to load this app and you'll see the shell of the app available here um, and the dashboards list. And those will be cached by default, but the dashboards themselves and the content within them won't be cached until a user requests to do so. And that's to save storage from caching all of these dashboards. And so normally when you do that, if you know all the data dependencies for this section, you just fetch all that data, save it in the cache and it's good to go. But the dashboards app is a little bit different because it doesn't know all the data yet. It needs to load these plugins and the plugins will make their own requests. So we've made a React API for a cacheable section component and an accompanying hook that, that adds some controls for those components that will um, wrap, this wrap this component and when you click to save it offline, it will reload that component. Oh, I'm sorry, let me log in. And it'll tell the service worker to start listening to all the network traffic that comes as it reloads that component. And so it'll capture all of that, that data for that section and cache it online or cache it for offline use. Um, and then when you load the app again and request this dashboard, all of that information will be there. So uh, the dashboards app with that feature is currently under construction right now, but I have this little demo app here that kind of emulates that kind of behavior. I have um, this little list of visualizations that reloads or that loads incrementally kind of to emulate the incremental requests that come from uh, plugins and then the plugins make more requests. And it's running a service worker here and we can see the online status. Um, right now we have this information cached. And so if we go offline, we can still see we have the app and all of the information. Uh, if we go back online and remove that from the cache and try to reload. Oh, sorry, let me describe some other things about this app first. So the service worker is, is sharing uh, is storing and serving the app shell here. Um, in the D2 config for this app, we have PWA is enabled. And to emulate the kind of behavior that we would use for the dashboards and omitting content until it's requested um, by a user to save offline, 
we're not caching visualizations by default. So when we look at the app and go offline and the section isn't cached, we can see that we get the, uh, the whole app, but not the visualizations yet. They haven't been cached. And if we disable the service worker, we can see what happens when you're normally offline, which is that you don't get anything. And so if we go back to using the service worker, we get this status. When we're back online, we can record this section for offline. So we use that cacheable section API to signal that we want this offline. We cache it, we see the last updated time, and then we can go offline and we have all of this information like a dashboard that we might want to take out into the field. So that's great. Um, pretty soon we'll release a beta version of the, of the dashboards app with those features to test out. Um, and I'll just recap a few of the features that we're providing. So we'll have the service worker that provides offline caching if you opt into it, the web manifest for installability. Um, we'll have the cacheable sections and recording mode API that served from the runtime. You can filter out URLs that you don't wanna cache until a user specifically requests to do so. And you'll have that online status hook. Those are the things that'll be available. And coming up next, we'll have this, this dashboard app that uses those features to, to give you the ability to take dashboards offline and use them without a network connection. Uh, we'll, we'll add some improvements to the caching, including normalization, which will reduce the, the amount of storage requirements for the data that's stored. It will increase performance and potentially enable um, sharing data between apps. We'll also add encryption so that these features are suitable to use for sensitive data. Um, and then maybe in the future, we'll add some more PWA features like syncing the, the saved data in the background. If you come back online, and your, uh, the app will fetch the newest information that you need so that you don't necessarily need to look at it um, to have the most up-to-date stuff when you go back offline. And then preloading content maybe so that you can visit an app and the whole thing will be available without having to browse to each page, for example. So that's all that I have for the PWA things. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions about those things if uh, you post questions on the community of practice, and I will hand it off to the next presenter. Thanks. Thanks, Guy. Really cool. Um, we are running a little bit short on time, so I'm just going to turn it straight over to Victor to talk to us about the Android SDK. Remember that if you post any questions in the chat or in the community of practice thread that has been linked by Grant, um, we will get back to them after the session as well. So please post any questions that you have there. Um, this is exciting stuff. Uh, go ahead, Victor. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I think you can see my screen, otherwise uh, please tell me. Uh, I'm Victor Garcia. Um, I'm from the Android team, from the Android, from the SDK component. So now I'm going to talk about uh, what is new in the Android SDK in the last year. Uh, but first of all, just in case you don't know what the Android SDK is, just a few words about what it is. So if we take a look at the big picture, uh, and we have the, the server here, and the Android SDK here, and, and then the official Android application. Uh, so the Android SDK is a part of the Android application that interacts with the server. So it means that all the interaction with the API, all the changes in the metadata and the compatibility with different ADH2 versions are managed by the Android SDK. So all this uh, is, is offered by the University of Oslo. They are uh, products that are available for you. So, and the purpose of the Android SDK because it's a separate, separated library uh, uh, within the, the Android application is to, uh, to facilitate the development on new, of new Android applications using the Android SDK. Oh, so, sorry, yes, go to the end. Uh, so if we take a look at, at the timeline, uh, yeah, the Android SDK was released like one, one year and a half ago. And in the meanwhile, we have had uh, four versions. Um, and since the last year, we are aligned with the, with the core team 
Uh, so we release uh, a major version every every time the core team releases a major version to uh, ensure the compatibility. So uh, now we are in the version 1.4. The next one is going to be 1.5 in the next September, next semester of this year. So very quickly, uh, just one minute to explain what it is, and then we will I will talk about the updates in since the last annual conference. So what it does, it manages the the synchronization of both metadata and data. So the application is able to work completely offline. It also offers the the information the, the data uh, in a developer friendly way. So it means it has handy methods to uh, read the data, to create new data, and uh, type safe also. So yeah, uh, what else? The compatibility with different DHS2 versions, because uh, in every DHS2 version, there are changes in the metadata, in the model, in the API. So all, all of that is encapsulated by the Android SDK. Um, so the, the application does not have to care about that. Also error management in synchronization and integrity check. And in some cases, uh, online interaction because yeah, the, the application is intended to be used in, in an offline mode, most of the cases, but for some, uh, some particular uh, functionalities, it offers the capability to work online. So what, what is new since the last annual conference? Um, we have the support uh, for the Android settings app. Uh, th this is a web app. I, if you don't know about this app, it, it uh, yeah, gives you the opportunity to control certain parameters in the application, like for example, the number of TI that you want to synchronize, the periodicity of the synchronization, and also uh, if you want to encrypt your database or not. So all uh, yeah, all these parameters can be configured here in the the Android settings app. If this is a web app available in the hub, and they are consumed by the Android SDK. Encryption as well. Uh, so uh, by default, the the Android application already had a uh, well, uh, quite a strong security. I mean, the applications are isolated from each other, but in case you need an extra le level of security, uh, you have the chance to encrypt the, the local database, the device. Uh, also the, the parser, this is quite a, a big thing. Uh, and the, there is a library uh, the parser library that is served between the backend and the Android team. So it ensures that the, all the expressions are parsed in the same way. And I'm talking about from indicators or validation rules or uh, data set indicators. So this is quite a big improvement in the, yeah, in the quality of the application in both sides. Uh, local TI analytics. This is this is more or less the same kind of analytics. Well, uh, quite similar uh, to the analytics that you can get from the event report web application, but in the scope of a single TI. So, using this functionality, you can, for example, see the evolution of uh, an indicator or another data element in a repeatable state in a TI. Working list support as well. And OpenID, this is quite new and will, will be available uh, when 236.2 is out. And is there the ability to, to authenticate in this case to using Google, uh, for uh, so far, just Google account. And what is coming? Uh, I, I said that uh, we have some kind of analytics in the TI, in the scope of a single TI. Uh, in next version, we want to improve the local analytics and give uh, analytic values across programs and also for aggregated data, and also give support for visualization. So uh, 
a certain kind of visualization can be evaluated in the using the SDK. Some utility method to evaluate logic that is uh, just pure due to logic. Uh, like for example, when a, an enrollment or an event can be edited or not, things like that. Break the glass support. That is an extra work. Uh, yeah, and in the roadmap, more in the medium term, we have multi-user, multi-server, because so far uh, this SDK can only be used by one server, one user at a time. And also uh, widget or UI components for Android, uh, because there are yeah there are so many things like the original tree or value type forms or the rendering types that are common for all. Uh, for all the Android applications, so it could be good to have a common library for that. Uh, yeah, so this is yeah, this is the Android SDK. This is the new things that have come in the last year. So the yeah, so the key idea here is yeah, the Android SDK is a, is a product that is evolving uh, quite fast. Is now we are focused on incorporating uh more kind of analytic features things like that so yeah uh if you are yeah thinking about building a custom application for any uh because you need that uh please consider the under the case uh as an option for that and i think yeah we are almost run out of, out of time so that's all from my side uh, i don't know if we have some time for questions or we are we i think we're pretty close to out of time unfortunately um thank you very much victor that that was a great presentation on the android sdk hopefully we have some uh people that are interested in using android for data collection or or anything else um and building on top of that android sdk um for extensibility in the field um just wanted to quickly close uh, and say that um, we do have a number of uh, additional initiatives to kind of bring extensibility into the core development, not only uh, building these platform tools upon which uh, other applications can be built, um, but you'll see more of that coming soon. And I'll talk a little bit about that in the session on Friday. Um, and we also want to work towards building more sustainable models for uh, generic applications to be shared among different uh, instances or implementations um, and how the maintenance of those applications is addressed over the long term. Um, again, we'll address questions that come up in the community of practice. Um, but with that, I think we have to wrap up to give time for people to, to move on to the next session, which I believe is a meet and greet in Gather. So Grant, does that, does that sound right? Is that the next, the next step? Absolutely. Um... Yep, I was just going to share my screen. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, wrong thing. Yep, so uh, it is now the uh, expert lounges and meet and greets uh, all over in Gather. If you haven't used Gather yet, please do. You can come and find me. I'll be hanging around the Tetris uh, <laughs> Tetris battle if you want to come and have a game of Tetris battle with me. Or if uh, you want to come and join uh, all of the different sessions we've got going on. So we've got some on LMIS. Uh, we've got some on predictors and advanced indicators uh, and then tracks for aggregate and program rules there as well so uh, do you come and pop in or if you just want to come in and uh, chat with some of the other uh, participants uh, on on the conference please do um, i'll post the link to gather uh, just in the chat now as well if you haven't had the uh, chance to use it yet then please do uh, come on in uh, if i can open the chat up um, <laughs> brilliant uh, and if we were in if we were in a conference actual conference setting now i'd uh, ask everyone to give a hand to uh, to present us today to uh, victor uh, kai deborah and austin as well so thank you very much everyone there we go <laughs> thank you peter <laughs> thanks guys <laughs>